All right, now that everything is hooked up and ready to go, we're going to start a new project in Machine Edition. Click Machine Edition Template, and then we'll hit OK to start a new Machine Edition. We'll create a project name, and then instead of Auto Detect Controller by IP, we're going to scroll down and find Pack Systems RX3i. We'll save this to my computer in the default location. This automatically populates a target for us, and it also gives us our ladder diagram main program. Let's hit OK. Our first step is to look at some of the affordances of Pack Machine Edition. We have ribbons up at the top to scroll through, so when we want to connect to our device, we go to the target menu. We have our navigator on the left-hand side that shows us everything based on our hardware configuration, our target, and all the files, programs, things like that. We have an inspector, so we can view properties uh, about each of the things that we're selecting, and we can also use this to just get a good idea of what's going on as we're working. On the left-hand side, we've opened up the companion. We can ask for help or when we select something, it'll give us a little more information. Like if I click on the rack here, it explains a little bit more about the rack and allows me to click here to see more about it. The feedback zone will be crucial when we're connecting to the device and running IO, we can see what's working, what's not working, and it should give us back um, some information so that we can search that and troubleshoot. We're gonna set up our configuration first and before we do that, let's rename our target. You can right click your target and hit rename. This is going to be the RX3i. So make sure that that matches. If you scroll down on the inspector tab, you can see the IP address is in red. Just click that and we're gonna set the default IP address that comes with the RX3i. 192.168.0.100. Okay, that can be found in the manual and that can also be changed later. Once we've selected the RX3i target, we're going to work on our hardware configuration. We need to make sure that we're using the right rack. In our case, we're using a 7 rack, so we need to replace the rack by right clicking 7 slot universal backplane. Click OK. We'll expand this menu a little bit more. And if we look closely, our slot zero is actually an AC power supply and we're using a DC power supply. Okay, right click slot zero and replace module. Click the 24 volt DC 40 watt power supply and we can see the model number matches. We'll hit okay. The CPE 330 is the CPU that we're using, but it's in the wrong spot, so we can click and drag that up into slot one. That also pulls slot two with it since it takes up two slots. I'm gonna add a module to slot three and that's our input simulator. We're using the IC694 ACC300. So scroll down and find that, make sure the model number matches. And we can see that it now is pulling up our properties. In slot four, we'll add another module and we have a discrete output, the MDL754. And make sure you double check it's the right, there's a couple close versions. We have the 754, 694. We also have an analog input and the ALG600. Our last slot is taken up by the high speed counter and that's under motion tab. And we have a four counter HSC 304. That should set us up with at least the right modules in our backplane. Notice how we have a few red X's. We need to figure out what those issues are. So if I pull this open, I can see my ethernet and slot six, the high speed counter are giving us trouble. So let's start with the ethernet. If we click on the ethernet, double click it, it should pull up our properties and we can scroll through and look for any errors. 
in LAN 1, we don't have an IP address. So we need to put in 192.168.0.100. And then for our subnet mask, we can put in 255.255.255.0. To get our defaults plugged right in, this controller has not been programmed yet. Uh, so it comes brand new and we need to put the hardware configuration on it. We can see that red X is gone on the ethernet module. And the last step is to look at slot six. A reference address here in the inspector shows that 21 is not addressable. Uh, we don't have enough memory for this particular address. So what we're gonna do is allocate more memory in the CPE 330. So when we double click that, we'll go down to memory and where it says analog input, we'll change this to 120. That should solve that problem for now. And notice our reference address to AI as an analog input 21. We now have enough room. That's our basic hardware configuration. Make sure that your ethernet is connected. Also make sure that you power your controller on by hitting the on in the PSD 40. You're gonna wait a minute for the power supply and the CPU to power up. And once everything is connected, we should be able to go to our target menu and connect. We'll look down in the feedback zone and see if it will connect properly. It says connected to device and it shows us the firmware version and the CPU that we're working on. We've successfully connected. We haven't told the RX3i or, or anything to, to do anything in particular, but we need to scroll down and look at the bottom of the screen. It says monitor run enabled, configure not equal, logic not equal. That means that the configuration is not equal with the controller and the logic is not equal either. We've got a blank program, so those don't match, but we also haven't loaded this configuration inside of the CPE 330. So our next step will be to sync the two up and we want to download our configuration and programs onto this. So we need to switch from program uh, to programmer mode. So by clicking this button, it takes us out of monitor mode. If we hit the down check, we only have the option to download. So let's download and it'll ask us what we want to download. We want to make sure that we select the hardware configuration and motion, logic, and initial forced values. We're going to clear everything and add all of the hardware to this particular device. Again, if it's a brand new device, we'll hit OK. We can see it's programming the device, and in the feedback zone, it's downloading everything. We have zero errors, zero warnings, but we do have some faults. So we need to make sure that we address that. At the bottom now, we can see that stop is disabled, configure is equal, logic is equal. So we've solved a few problems. And now let's go to our fault table. We can double click the RX3i and look to see if there's any controller faults. We've got a few here. And if there's any IO faults. And it looks like we have one here. So we can clear the IO fault here and say yes. And we can go to the controller and clear controller fault. And we'll say yes. Now we can see that there are no faults and we should be ready to load our first program. If you'd like to save this, make sure you hit the save at the top. And if you'd like to uh, save this hardware configuration, 
You can hit stop on the controller. Disconnect. You can right click your hardware configuration, export to file, and then save wherever you need to. Later on, that means you can just import that same hardware configuration by right clicking and import from file. That should save you all the setup time. Once you have a controller programmed, you can also go through and make sure that you pull that configuration off and back into uh, Pac Machine Edition. To do that, you would connect and hit upload. Make sure you save your work.